All right, here we are at this job. I'm gonna pressure wash these front steps. Steps tend to get a lot of mildew. Because water sits on them and runs down and so they stay wet longer than say the brick siding of the house, that's why. The brick walls don't tend to mildew as much and they're protected more by the overhangs. So I'm gonna put a little bit of a solution on this to kill the mildew and algae. And I'm gonna pressure wash all that garbage off. Probably pull these meats up at the same time. Yes, they got these little red maples coming up too. Wouldn't that be funny if you let that keep growing? A dandelion, a couple more red maples. All right, that's probably good enough. I think the pressure washer will get those last little bits out because pressure washers are pretty strong. All you have to do is look at my hand. You can see that scar right there. That was using the weakest nozzle on the pressure washer. Cut me really quick. All right, got the boots. Safety glasses, definitely. We got our sprayer. I like to use a garden sprayer to apply the um, cleaning solutions. Even though you can run it through this siphon tube, through the pump, and they do have quote unquote pressure washer safe detergents, I prefer to just run water through mine and use a sprayer separately. This is a Simpson Pro Series 3700 PSI, 2.5 gallons per minute, powered by Honda. These are all the nozzles. So the pressure is always the same on this thing. It runs wide open all the time. And the way you actually change the cleaning power is change your nozzle. So this is a soaping nozzle. You can see it has a really big orifice there. And when you put that on, it causes the pump to draw from this siphon tube to uh, pull soap up. And as soon as you switch to another nozzle, which is a higher pressure nozzle, um, the siphoning effect stops. There's some sort of you know, regulator in there that can tell how much pressure is being called for. If the flow through the pump is a lot, which it would be if it had a big orifice like that, then this starts drawing liquid. If the flow is less, which it would be less if it's being try trying to be squeezed through these little orifices, this is the biggest orifice of all the pressure. This is lowest pressure to highest pressure over here. So it stops drawing. But like I said, I don't use it. So with mortar and cement, we're going to go with this yellow nozzle. The green and the whites are more for doing like decks and stuff, siding. The red, some people call it the laser nozzle. This is how you flay yourself to the bone. It shoots a solid stream really, really hard. And you can do a lot of damage really quick. So it's very rarely used. It's like for getting gum off the sidewalk or something it's it's really you know it's one of those that uh, it's there for emergencies that's why it's red maybe you don't want to keep this too close to the work because it creates a lot of exhaust like I said it runs wide open and we got 50 feet of hose, so we're just gonna put it out here in the yard. This is the high pressure outlet. This is what we're gonna hook this pressured hose to. And it's gonna face our work. Actually, in the sun, this doesn't look too bad. I mean, you can see that shouldn't be black there, or 
and dark, especially in the mortar. But overall, these bricks were just put in here like five or six years ago, maybe less, because this house was moved from another location. So it's not that old. Even though the house itself was built in the 70s, I believe. It was in a flooding area. And so they had it moved, I think it was about five or six years ago. I'm not sure, so those are new bricks. In fact, the whole thing has been rebricked. And those edge treatments on the brick, they're of course a more modern design, so they were able to kind of update the house after it was moved. Do this craftsman style porch. I don't think the original had a porch on it either. I think it was just brick ranch. up the pressure washer we're gonna mix up some solution here Need to do two scoops of this and this is an oxygen type cleaner because it kills the algae and mold and helps to whiten and bleach but it's not harmful, it's not like a chlorine base. And it actually has a nice fresh smell. It doesn't have a fragrance. It has a nice fresh, just a clean air kind of smell to it. I don't know if it's that it's ozone being released or what, but you know, if it's a peroxide thing, what happens I guess is uh, when it reacts, it releases an oxygen because Hydrogen peroxide, I believe, is two hydrogens and two oxygens. And when it reacts, it separates one of the oxygens and then turns into water. So it would be, go from H2O2 to H2O. And the byproduct is water and oxygen. So very harmless for the most part in low concentrations. And it works good on a lot of stuff. I like to put just a little, maybe a third, in the bottom there. Give it a little agitation. I'm doing this with one hand, but typically I pick it up and I shake it good with two to kind of get it mixed. Turn the water up really high. Kind of mixes itself while it's going in there. Let's see, that's about as much as we want. It's up to about there.
Here's my quadruple A socked feet. This is where the incoming water goes. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. You can see that scar on the hand really nicely now, can't you? I was very thankful that happened actually because first of all, it was my first time pressure washing. And secondly, it was the lowest pressure nozzle, so I didn't do a whole lot of damage. It looks worse than it is. It really just took the top layer of skin off. But it looks like a horrendous scar. I should make up a great story for it, but it's not. I was just trying to clean my hands off. They had some dirt on them when I first started the thing up and I just unconsciously just turned the sprayer on my hand to sprint, spritz off some dirt and look down and I'm bleeding. And I was like, thank you, Lord, that that did not happen with a higher pressure nozzle because I could have amputated my thumb there. I'm going to get the hose off here. Now, once you get pressure in these hoses, they get hard and tight, these high pressure hoses. So I recommend unrolling them completely before you start because once this thing is pressurized any kinks and stuff are going to want to stay in it here's a full shot of pressure washer you want to see that nice Honda GX 200 engine so this is like commercial grade 3700 is as much pressure as you need for most jobs in fact I think a lot of people just use 3100 and stuff but this is what I got because it had a uh, had a higher quality pump than the homeowner variety this is where the higher pressure hose connects. Note about pressure washers is they use a lot less water than using your hose because what they do is they take the water from your hose and create more pressure by squeezing it basically through a smaller, smaller orifice so, like, this says 2.5 gallons per minute. So that means you're basically spraying this wand here for a minute. And the most you're going to get through it is probably 2.5 gallons. Whereas if you took that hose and turned it on wide open, it's probably going to use maybe 5 gallons a minute. Maybe more, maybe less, but it's going to use more than a wand with a pressure washer. So it actually, pressure washing actually saves resources. I'm gonna hook the other end of the high pressure hose up to the wand. So in this case with this oxygen based cleaner, a lot of people recommend with other cleaners and detergents at least, that you wet your surface first whether it be brick or your deck or whatever um, but I find that basically just dilutes your dilution even more by like 50 percent and with the cleaner I'm using it's not going to do any harm when it gets inside the brick or gets inside the mortar it's actually going to do what we need it to do and kill the roots of the mildew and mold and algae so we're just going to go ahead and spray this very safe non-toxic cleaner on here let it sit for just a few minutes and then we're going to get to work and you always want to start spraying in the bottom 
up because that way that way if any runs down it's running on already wet stuff and it doesn't leave streaks so I'm gonna pre-soak this whole thing and then I'm gonna pre-soak it again I'm just gonna try to keep it wet for about 10 or 15 minutes so it can do its job So we're gonna leave that to bake for a couple minutes keep an eye on it if anything starts looking like it's getting dry we're gonna give it another little spritz I'm gonna go ahead and get my safety glasses on my hearing protection because not only is the engine to a pressure up washer loud and can damage your hearing over time the actual water coming out of the the, the uh, wand is very loud and you're very close to it and um, it can damage your hearing as well so always wear hearing protection and it is a hot sunny day and I am a bald man so I'm gonna wear my sun hat Keeping it damp. I don't know if you can see that, but the water is kind of turning tea colored there. And that is the stuff doing its job. Now you can see really how black this is. That should be a red brick right there. And I'll compare it to the bricks up there. And then I'll do an after shot of how much cleaner this will get after we do the pressure washing so that is a 15 degree nozzle I'll snap it on the quick connect here I can do it with one hand maybe put it between my legs here there we go. and always make sure that this thing snaps all the way back up like that otherwise when you turn this on you will shoot your pressure nozzle all the way across the world hopefully not hit anybody or break any windows and go turn the water on look at these little peach trees they say they are called patio peaches that's kind of cool Now if you have a piece of equipment, gasoline powered equipment, or fuel powered equipment, well no gasoline powered equipment, that you move around a lot or put in your vehicle, you want to turn it off by actually turning the fuel off and letting it run out of fuel rather than turning the switch off. Now when you're using it and you need to turn it off and on on the job, use the switch but when you're getting ready to go turn the fuel off let it run out because what happens is if you leave the fuel valve open and you leave fuel in the um, bowl of the carburetor which that's what it would do if the fuel were open the bowl of the carburetor if the valve were open the bowl of the carburetor would uh, be full of fuel and then you're driving around and the whole thing's sloshing it ends up leaking fuel into the cylinder which washes all the oil off the cylinder walls first of all and second it starts draining into the crankcase down there at the bottom where all the oil goes and it thins out your oil and you'll actually ruin your engine a lot faster a lot faster than had you always turned your fuel off so if you're traveling around with a gasoline engine turn your fuel off so we're going to turn the fuel to on since it's been off we're going to turn the choke on to choke off the air so we can get a good start. But 
before we do that, before we actually pull it, we got water flowing to this thing. We're going to try to make sure that most of the air is out of the hose because air makes this not pump like it's supposed to. So it's good if you can make sure your hose is full of water before you even hook it up. But And we could crank this and hold the handle down and it'll empty the air pretty fast, but it'll surge and spit and cycle and I find this is better. That's that's probably good enough. Alright, we got it on. Fuel's on, chokes on. Give it a little pull. I'm going to stop the machine a minute to show you a good example of clean versus not clean. So you can see it right there. I ran the pressure washer over that and on both sides of it you can still see the mildew and all. finished up here so this brick I know some of it looks like it still has mildew on it but it doesn't that's the way the brick is baked it's a style you can see on the rest of the house the dark bricks and light bricks are actually different kinds of bricks but that might have been the one I pointed out with all the mildew on it or so I thought but you can see it's still toasty but this one is gleaming all the mortar is gleaming here you got a couple of different colors of mortar that's not um, that's not staining that's a different color of sand in there or it's red clay that got mixed in with the mortar when they were doing the job originally but you can see and as they dry it's gonna get brighter and brighter and brighter so that's it 